Good morning. morning. And happy Easter. Easter. Welcome to Bethlehem United Methodist Church. Thank you for being here with us today on this beautiful and important day. Please sign the attendance folders found at the end of the pew and pass it to the person next to you. As a reminder, we have a nursery for children up to age three. Children age four through first grade are invited to attend Kids Corner which is our children's church, following the children's time. There are several announcements in the bulletin, as usual. I would like to highlight a few of those at this time. Registration is still open for the new season of Wonderful Wednesday, which begins on April 15th, tax day. Sign up on the church website or pick up a brochure in the Narthex or from the church office. The UMW silent auction will be held on Saturday, April 18th. Dinner is at 545 with tickets costing $7, which are available after each service today. The auction will begin at 645. No tickets are necessary for that. The seventh annual Andy Andrews Memorial Spring Swing is scheduled for Monday, May 4th at 1 p.m. Brochures and registrations are available in the Narthex or office. I have one last announcement this morning. Pastor Lord starts out on his well-deserved sabbatical tomorrow. He has laid out an itinerary rich with opportunities to deepen his faith, gain a fuller understanding of what God's plan is not only for himself, but also for those who call him our own, and come back to us with renewed energy along with a firm resolve to help move Bethlehem from a good church to a great church. Thank you, Robbie. (laughs) On this wonderful day of resurrection, the notion that David will return here, spiritually reborn, is altogether appropriate. One of the things, as many of us know, that gives David great joy is climbing on a motorcycle and heading out to enjoy the open road, or desert, as the case may be. He has had rides where he felt God riding with him. Some of that will certainly be happening during his time away from us. And I have have it on good account that one of the other things he's going to do while he's on sabbatical, he's going to climb into Jack Phillips' open cockpit airplane and enjoy the beauties of flight without a lot of windows and doors around him. So there is this beautiful poem called High Flight to keep in mind until David returns. The very last line is, he'll be able to reach out and touch God's face. In this particular case, he'll be able to do that in Jack's airplane. (laughs) So perhaps somewhere along the way, he will be able to do just that, reach out and touch God's face but maybe more importantly, God will touch his. So, uh, Godspeed, David. You go with our prayers and best wishes for experiences that will stay with you forever. We eagerly look forward to happily welcome you home again. You're welcome.
stand for the call to worship printed in your bulletin. Roll away the stone of doubt. Let our songs dance on the waves. And our joy echo off the canyon walls. Christ is risen today. Christ is risen indeed. Let dead ends be turned into entrance ramps. And dry deserts yield new bouquets. Christ is risen just as he said. Christ is risen indeed. I invite you to pass the peace. Please greet your neighbors. Welcome each other. Peace of the Lord be with you. turn to page 888. This is our affirmation of faith. It comes from 1 Corinthians 15 and Colossians 1, page 888. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day, and appeared first to the women then to Peter and the Twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the Anointed One of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen. Please be seated. And at this time, I'd like to invite all of the children to come up for our children's time.
Welcome, boys and girls. Welcome. So good to have everybody here on this Easter Sunday. And I would like to announce before I forget about it that after church, there's going to be an Easter egg hunt for all ages. We've got lots. We've got 500 eggs that are hidden out, outside. And so you, you stay after church for the Easter egg hunt. Okay? All of you. Now, as you may have heard, I'm going on a journey. I'm going to be gone for 12 weeks, and I'll be coming back in July. And the women of the church have given me this beautiful, what is this? Everybody know? Backpack, absolutely. And there's, and I love it. It's a great backpack, and there's all kind of good things in here. And so I want you to see what I've been given. One is a journal to write in. So I can write things in there that I see, things that I do thoughts that I have, I'll write prayers, and then I even have some pens that go along with that, see, colored pens, I'm going to need that, I might get thirsty along the way, and so I have, what's this, a water bottle, and this is a cool one because it also has a filter inside, so it comes with extra filters, now what is this, first aid kit, right, I might need that, hopefully I won't, but if I do, <laughs> I've got it, and there's another one that, that maybe I won't need, but it's in here. It's this. It doesn't look like it, but that's a blanket. It's made out of a special material that if you ever get really cold, it's called a rescue blanket or emergency blanket. So if I ever got in the snow or whatever, I could cover up with that and it would keep me warm. And then one final thing. Anybody know what that is? Oh, it's compass. You're right. You have got it. You know what it what it does? It does. It tells <laughs> tells you where you're going. And did it spill? Okay. How about it? Did I fix it? All right. Yeah. Okay. So this will get me home, right? The compass will help me. Now, there's probably some other things that I need to take along in my backpack here. Can you name anything that I want? Flashlight, Flashlight would be good. What's some other things? A book, some snacks. All right. <laughs> snacks. Are... Shoes. I'm going to need shoes. The Bible. I don't have a Bible, but I'll definitely put it in there. We'll wash them one more. Okay. All right. We've already had some Easter candy this morning, huh? Okay. All right. All right welcome. Welcome. Well, you know, boys and girls, wonderful thing is that, and I want to I wanna share something with you. Wherever I go, I'm also taking Jesus Christ. And because Jesus is, is in us and with us, and wherever we go, wherever we journey, Christ goes with us. I want to give you each a little cross. And this can be, it, it came from uh, olive wood that was grown in the Holy Land. It was made there uh, where Jesus lived. And it has a little hole in it. If you want to make a, a necklace, put a cord through it, or you can just put it in your pocket. Like I, I've got a, a cross in my pocket. So I want to give every one of you one. In fact, I'll get some help to hand it to you when you're heading out the kids' quarter, okay? And uh, so I'd like to have a prayer with all of you. Let's pray. I thank you, God, for these boys and girls. And we thank you most of all for Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive. And we celebrate the resurrection and Easter today where we know that Jesus is alive and living in and through us and goes with us wherever we go. So bless these boys and girls. Go with them throughout their lives, wherever their journey leads. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, boys and girls. Now I'll ask Bob to hand out there. Here you go. Here's yours. I'm sorry. Any of you going that way? Okay. He's going to take care of you. Okay, if you're heading to Kids Corner, you can follow Miss Sue. Make sure you get across before you, you go. Okay, look for Mr. Bob. Thank you. If we, if we missed anybody, please come up and get one. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Well, I would like to say welcome to all of you this morning. It's good to have so many 
here. Uh, we had a good attendance for the early service as well and the sunrise service. So um, I think this is the third time today for me. So, <laughs> But it feels great. I'm glad you're here. And um, it's good to see folks that are back from Florida. And it's good to have others that are, have brought family with you today. And uh, it's so good to see every one of you. And I hope you have a, a blessed Easter. Um, today it will be Sheila Andrews last Sunday here. She will be moving. And so our prayers for Sheila as she goes. And uh, we want to pray for our mission team. We commissioned them this morning at the sunrise service and sent out, um, I think there were about 15 to 16 of them that are on their way to eastern Kentucky for the week-long uh, spring break mission trip. We have youth and adults going, and uh, so pray for them this week as they go. Um, a special thanks to the choir and to our musicians and uh, Matt Usselton for uh, the beautiful cantata on Friday night, the tenebrae service, and for the special music today. Easter is always a, uh, a special day for, for music and singing and uh, worship together, and we have a beautiful day. Uh, this morning, as we move towards our prayer time, I um, call your attention to the yellow insert. It has names of folks for whom we're praying, and we want to continue to lift up those who are recovering from surgery and, and those that are receiving treatment for cancer and other serious disease. To pray for those who are serving in the military, that list front and back of listing those who are serving our nation to lift them up. I also ask for your prayers for the weeks ahead, and I'm looking forward to this sabbatical time, a time of renewal, uh, experiences of, of uh, being with God and um, just prayer, and that'll be my focus. I'll be lifting you in prayer, and I ask for your prayers. Uh, Larry Davies, who is our district superintendent, will be the interim pastor, and I'm looking forward to him being with you. Uh, Larry's the author of several books. He's an excellent preacher. He'll be uh, leading a, a, a sermon series in, entitled Good to Great in God's Eyes, based on a book by Chip Ingram that Paul Evelyn and Don Kelso are leading as a Sunday school class. So plan to come uh, next week to Sunday school um, and be a part of that class. And we've got some excellent classes that have started up today. So I'll be praying for you as, as um, you experience renewal as well. So we'll pray for each other and the needs of our world Lift up, lifting up the students of the school in Kenya who um, were asked, what religion are you? And if they said Christian, they, sh they killed them. So Christians around the world are being persecuted and killed, and we are blessed in our country, and so we want to pray and, and be supportive of those who are persecuted for their faith. As we go to the Lord in prayer, I invite you to sing, He is Lord. The words are printed in your bulletin, so let us be called to prayer as we sing, He is Lord. Our Lord and we are here today to worship you and to say thank you that you died on the cross for our sins that you took upon yourself all the things that are wrong in our lives and you offer forgiveness and life and you rose from the dead victorious over sin and victorious over the grave so that death is no more and we near not need not fear death for you have conquered it and we thank you that you are alive and living through each of us, that you are with us through your spirit, that you indwell us, that you empower us, and then you send us forth into a world of need to be Christ to a hurting world. We thank you for each other, for the church universal and Christians throughout the world who are gathering on Easter Day to worship you and to celebrate the resurrection. May that same power that raised you Raise us all up to serve you and to be your church in the world. Pray, Lord, for those who are struggling today, 
those that are suffering, for the Christians who are being persecuted and killed. We pray also, Lord, for the church universal that you would guide us and direct us that we can make a difference in the world around us. Thank you for Bethlehem Church, for our mission and our vision. We thank you for the, our brothers and sisters who love us, who pray for us, who care for us. And we look forward to what you're going to do in and through us for the days ahead, for the renewal that's happening and revival that's taking place in our lives. We pray, Lord, for those who are sitting beside us and around us now. We lift them up to you and ask that you meet their need. May your will be done in their lives. Draw them close. We love you and we thank you and we pray that this worship service will honor you and that it will be the beginning of a new journey for all of us as we seek to do your will and to be your church. We pray all of this in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us worship as we present to God our tithes and offerings.
praise you for the risen Lord. And we thank you, God, for all the blessings we have in life. We have so much. So bless now these gifts that we return to you. Multiply them and use them for the glory of your kingdom and the work of your church. We pray in your name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Today's reading comes to us from the Gospel according to Mark, the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 8. If you'd like to follow along, it is printed on the back of the bulletin. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There will you see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Amen. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Robin. Robin. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Will you pray with me? We thank you that we serve a risen Savior, and that you are here today. My prayer for each of us is that we would experience you, that we would welcome you, that we would allow you to fill our lives so that when we leave this place, we begin anew a journey with you. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A number of people have been wishing me well for my journey, giving me cards that saying, we'll be praying for you on your journey. Others will say, blessings upon you for your journey. So that word journey has is, is just been on my mind lately, thinking about what it means. And, and it's true. Uh, I'm on a journey. It will be. We all are, really. If you want to follow me on this journey, the bulletin board that's in the fellowship hall, if you've noticed it, it's sort of a, well, it looks like a Where's Waldo, but with my face on it, you know. And um, so you'll get to follow me that way. And um, so Waldo will, or Where's Pastor, it says, will be moved around in the months ahead. Um, the first part of it will be traveling to Georgia. Cheryl and I hopefully will leave out sometime tomorrow and make our way to our hometown in uh, Tifton, Georgia, a little town in South Georgia where we both grew up and uh, attended the same church, were members there. And I want to visit that church. It's First United Methodist Church in Tifton. And uh, where really uh, I want to sort of connect with my spiritual roots and remember my childhood. And um, I want to visit the church. And there's a wall uh, in the church where it has pictures of members of the church that have gone into the ministry. And I, I like this wall, and I like my picture because it was taken when I was 30. So, um, <laughs> you know, I, I look good. I've got on my robe a white stole, and I've got hair. And so I'm perpetually <laughs> 30 years old uh, on that wall. So I want to see the wall. And then there's a, a chapel that um, in the church where when Cheryl and I began dating, we would go down into the chapel on, on, on our dates, and we would pray, and then we would go make out. And then, <laughs> and then I would come back and pray more. But it was all good. It was all proper. Nothing improper at all. We were, we were young and in love. We were in love with each other, and we were in love with Jesus. And prayer was a part of our lives in the beginning of this journey over 40 years now that we've been uh, together. And so I want to kind of reconnect with my, my childhood roots and, and then um, from there go to Savannah and, and Wesleyan roots. And there's a Methodist museum, a place called Epworth-by-the-Sea, which is a Methodist retreat center, and, and then uh, some time with my mother. So reconnecting there. And then um, in May, uh, the end of April through May, I'll be traveling out to, to uh, New Mexico and Colorado, spending time in monasteries there in prayer, and then back here uh, in June to visit places in Virginia that will also be times of spiritual renewal. So um, on this journey, but we're all on a journey. And I'm thinking today, and we are too, uh, all are, about the journey in which Christ made. And we've been reading John's Gospel, and the prologue of John reminds us that, that in Jesus, God became flesh. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And he's talking about Jesus, and it says, and the Word became flesh and lived among us. So Jesus is God in the flesh, born of Mary. We see him in the temple at the age of 12, saying, I'm about my father's business. We see him at the Jordan River where he was baptized by John and the heavens opened and the voice spoke saying, this is my son whom I love. And Jesus begins his earthly ministry of proclaiming the kingdom and calling people into the kingdom, asking them to, to repent, to turn, and to accept uh, the kingdom of God. I hear it. <laughs> well, that's all right. <laughs> At first I thought it was mine. So. <laughs> uh, 
And then we see Jesus again on the mountaintop. And again, that voice says, this is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. And then the journey begins to Jerusalem, where Jesus takes those steps that will ultimately end on the cross. And this past week, Holy Week, we have been reliving those times. And, and Friday night, thinking of Jesus' death, where he was nailed to the cross, and the, the centurion that we talked about last week that stood in front of him, and he heard Jesus say, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And then it is finished. And the veil of the temple, tearing in two, the, the veil that separated the Holy of Holies from the people, and now we all have access to the Father, all have access to God because of what Jesus has done. And these women, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, they were there at the cross. They were there when Jesus died. They saw his body taken down from the cross. They saw him placed in the tomb. They saw that stone rolled into place, the stone that symbolizes finality. And their thoughts are, this is, this is the end. Jesus is dead. The journey is over. But what they didn't know is that the journey continues. And then on that first day of the week, that Sunday morning, they had say, been saying to one another, who will roll this stone away? It wasn't even on their mind. But when they got there, the stone was already rolled away. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white, we know to be an angel. And they were alarmed. He says, you're looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He's been raised. He is not here. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He is alive. And he invites us to join him in this journey. Now, music is a, a big part of, of our lives and uh, enjoy anthems and the choir, the music from Friday night. There might be a, a special song or that you like listening to, maybe a praise song that you hear on the radio or just another song that speaks to you. And there's one that's sort of been speaking to me this week. I think I can play uh, the, at least the chorus of it. I'm gonna ride it all night long. You're going my way. I'm gonna drive it all night long. Okay, so not a, exactly a church song. But. <laughs> if I was on American Bandstand, I'd say, I'd give it an 89, it has a great beat, easy to dance to. <laughs> Any of you remember Bandstand? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I wish life was a highway, you know? It's not. Highways are smooth, they're constructed, they're made, they're maintained, there's lines to keep you in the right place. I remember when they built the interstate, Interstate 75, I-75 that came through our town. We went up there to look at it, and we were like four lanes. Can you imagine? Two going south, two going north. It has a median, it has a shoulder, it has exit ramps, it has signs, it has, its, there has rules, it has laws. It tells you how far it is to get to some place. But life isn't like that. Life is more like Paul Evelyn sharing his journey on the Appalachian Trail where life can be rocky, a road where sometimes it's difficult to determine where to go, if you're on the right path or not, where you encounter mountains and valleys and rivers to cross, difficult things in life that come our way. This is more what life is like. In the upper room for Wednesday, <laughs> some of you read the upper room as a devotional guide. This is from Kathleen Buskirk from California. I have been diagnosed with a rare cancer. On Easter morning, my husband and I clung to each other in church, especially moved by our pastor's proclamation. Jesus died for our sins. And today he is, a risen, he is risen and is alive. He conquered death so that we can live eternally in heaven with our merciful God. This, friends, changes everything. This changes everything. 
She says, as we let the pastor's words sink in, my husband and I exchanged a glance. Our minds were whirling with the news of my cancer and with the task of telling our children and not told her, her children. In the past, I would have spun out of control with worry. But Twelve years ago, I invited Jesus Christ to be Lord of my life. I trust him not only with my cancer, but with every breath I take and with my salvation when I leave this world. It changes everything. Christ risen from the dead changes everything. This is good news. You can see on your bulletin the reading from 1 Corinthians. Paul says, I proclaim to you good news, brothers and sisters. Good news. It's unfortunate, I think, that we've kind of forgotten how to proclaim that good news. A survey of, of people in their 20s were asked what their impression of the church was, and it wasn't good. The first one was anti-gay. The second one was judgmental. The third one was hypocritical, and it didn't get much better down the line. Their impression was that this is not a church of good news. We've got to learn how to proclaim the good news again because this is good news that Jesus Christ is alive who calls us to this journey, who's living in all of us to share his love with a hurting world. I want to share a story that uh, Bert Bowers shared with me and I've been hanging on to it, looking for a time to share. Two ministers were standing by the road and they had a sign that said, turn, the end is near car coming by, slowed down, rolled down the window and said, you religious nuts, we don't want to hear your message. Go back to your churches where you belong. Sped down the road and around the curve and they heard this big splash. One looked at the other and said, you think we should change our sign to bridge out? Like, if you were riding down the road, that would be good news, right? Bridge out. <laughs> Somehow we've lost the way to communicate that. My prayer today is that every one of us can experience the risen Christ and then join him on that journey of sharing that good news with the hurting world. I like Mark's gospel. It's, it's short, it's succinct, he's to the point. It's only eight verses describing the, the resurrection. And the earliest manuscripts of Mark's gospel ends with verse 8, which is interesting. It says, so they went out and fled the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them and they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. This is how the earliest manuscripts end. Them going out and saying nothing. They were afraid. We know that later they must have talked about it because we know about it. The disciples did go to Galilee. There they did meet Jesus as the angel said, and I think we're a lot like these women, that there's some fear that keeps us from talking about it, keeps us sharing the good news, but we don't have to be afraid. And so today, I invite you to come and to receive and to welcome and to experience the risen Lord through Holy Communion, because He is our food for the journey. But today, as you come, Come with an open heart. As you receive the bread, as you receive the juice, may it, may it be the Spirit of Christ, the strength, the power of Christ filling you so that you can then go and tell the good news that Jesus Christ is risen, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Will you pray with me? We thank you, Jesus, for fact that you are alive, that we serve a risen Savior, and that because you live, we can face tomorrow. We can be on this journey no matter where it leads us. And you'll help us along the way. You'll go with us. you walk with us. And we walk with you. And so as we come, we come to receive you and to make new commitments to journeying with you. We pray this in your name. Amen. I'll invite you to turn in your hymnal to page 15 and 16. This will be our service of...
of com Holy Communion. I'll be using uh, a great thanksgiving from the book of worship that uh, has the complete liturgy for Easter Day. And so uh, it will be prompts that lead up to what you will read. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is God. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As United Methodists, we observe open communion, and all are welcome to come and receive. You may be a member of another church, you may not have a church home, but it's the Lord's table and, and he invites us all. We will receive by intention, the ushers will lead you in coming. We're going to have two stations, one on this side and one on this side. 
So if you're sitting on this side, come this way down the center aisle, receive, and then return to your pew that way. If you're on this side, please come down the center aisle, receive, and return that way. I'll, I will, um, I'll serve you the bread, and then you dip it into the juice. It's called intinction. If you prefer to drink from the little cups, we have a station over here. If you'd like to find a place at the altar to pray before you return to your pew, you're welcome to do that or to return uh, and pray there. And so the ushers will lead you in coming. You'll come both uh, down the, the center aisle. So I'll ask the ushers to come and, uh, and lead us. And again, it's the Lord's table. I invite you to come. Won't you come? <coughs>
Let's stand as we sing our closing hymn, number 302. Christ the Lord is risen today. 302. <clears throat> Thank you so much for worshiping with us here on, on this Easter day. Hope you have a wonderful resurrection celebration and uh, enjoy your time with family. I do want to uh, say farewell to any that uh, have not said goodbye to me yet. I, I'm going to be standing out in the narthex this way and I'd love to say thank you. Uh, you are truly a generous church in allowing me to take this time and my prayers for renewal for all of us and I look forward to seeing you first Sunday in July. You receive the benediction, which is an ancient one from the first century, where we say Christ is risen, I say that, and you say Christ is risen indeed. And how we'll do it is three times we'll say it, and we get louder each time. So that the last one we're shouting, and then we all say, shout, hallelujah. Ready? Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.